Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Audible is the destination for thrilling audio entertainment with next listen recommendations to habituate every type of thriller listener. The time is now more than ever to embrace the breathtaking, sinister, and shocking tales that have enthralled you, especially with brand new exclusive thrillers from best-selling authors who are guaranteed to keep you gripped. So, Ronnie, I recently downloaded Squeeze Me by Carl Hyacin, mainly because it shows a martini glass with a snake tail wrapped around it. I mean, what else needs to be said? And I am very excited to listen to it later today. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Do you struggle trying to reach those corner lashes when applying mascara? L'Oreal Paris' new Panorama Mascara catches every lash for corner-to-corner volume. Your sister uh, has been using this, right? She loves it, yes. They sent me some, and I gave it to my sister and my nieces. And actually, I looked at, uh, I saw my niece the other day and was like, your eyelashes, is that the new mascara? She's like, yes, look at them. (laughs) They were like fanned out. I mean, this is a great product. You can buy Panorama Mascara on Amazon today. Want to see life in Panorama with fully fanned out lashes? Now you can with L'Oreal Paris Panorama Mascara that creates corner-to-corner panoramic lash volume. Have you ever covered a carpet stain with a rug? Ignored a leaky faucet? Pretended your half-painted living room is supposed to look like that? Well, you're not alone. We've all got unfinished home projects. But there's an easier way. When you download Thumbtack, it's easier to care for your home from top to bottom. Pull out your phone, and in just a few steps, you can search, chat, and book highly rated pros right in your neighborhood. Plus, you'll know what to tackle next, because Thumbtack is the app that shows you what to do, who to hire, and when. So say goodbye to all those unfinished home projects, and say hello to caring for your home the easier way. Download Thumbtack and start a project today. Hello and welcome to Watch Our Crap Ins, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker and joining me today is the one and only Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How's it going? So good. It's below deck day, so I hired people to come over and vacuum, so we just feel right at home. It's perfect. Yeah, if you hear the, it's such a subtle, quiet noise, but if for some reason someone pick, if you pick up on it, it's an actual vacuum that's happening. That's like, what's happening. happening. Yeah, we're, we're recording a little earlier today, and we just didn't reschedule life enough. Um, but I figured it was fitting for this show, you know? A little cleaning yeah. action. There it goes. It's totally nice. fitting. Yeah. Um, so, real quickly, next week, our the Netflix is a Joke Festival is starting next week, which has really snuck up on us. We're doing our show at the Kookaburra Lounge in Hollywood, uh, and we have decided to do something a little different which is that we are going to do our very first ever live Dwell Hello episode. Dwell Hello is the sh- is are the episodes we do exclusively for Wondery Plus. Um, that uh, we recap House Hunters episodes, House Hunters, House Hunters International. My mom recently put in a request for the million do- the lottery show where David comes in and and <laughs> and and pushes people into buying houses. But either way, uh, we do House Hunters episodes, and we're, we have so much fun with them, and we think it would be a really fun thing to do for Netflix as a joke. Uh, we'll, have, we'll hopefully have some visuals that we can, we can all look at these houses together, make fun of them, make fun of the choices. We always have a fun time recording Dwell Hello, and in fact, we have a Dwell Hello that we, are, we will be recording this week, so keep an eye out for that, an ear and an eye out for it. And then, of course, uh, tickets are at watchcrappens.com. And uh, we are going to Europe later in May, so we come join us in London, Birmingham, or Dublin. So that's that for that. And let's talk about some Below Deck, shall we? Yeah, I would just like to first thank the cheer mom at the cheer weekend I just spent for just giving me oh? so much life. These cheer moms are fucking insane. Have you ever been to a cheer event? 
Uh, the- thankfully, no. Oh, my God. I mean, I've been to a bunch of them, and they're all cuckoo cray-cray. It is, so, especially here in Texas, is so funny seeing these gigantic monster trucks, you know, that we have here. You've seen, you've seen them before. Literally, mm-hmm. the parking spaces, you can lie down in the parking spaces. They're so huge. They're like a king-size bed for those trucks. And there's these big trucks, and then these burly guys get out of them with, like, handlebar mustaches, and they're dressed head-to-toe in pink sparkles for their kids' cheer. It's so cute wow. and so funny. <laughs> it's just a different world. Okay, so I'm watching my niece, and the team that went before her, one of the moms is crazy, and she runs up to the front of the stage, and she starts doing the cheer with them. And it's this big woman, you know, with clothes that don't fit her. And she's jumping up, and she's like, and then we did it. We did it. And we turned around. Kick. And she's, like, jumping up and trying to, like, <laughs> swing. I mean, it's the craziest shit I've ever seen. And everyone's just sitting there like, us totally normal as Patty. You know, it's just Patty losing her damn mind, learning all the choreography and living her dreams through her child. Totally Toots. normal, Patty. Totally fucking normal. <laughs> Thank you so much. I did, of course, take video. I cannot post that video because that's wrong to do. Like, take secret video of people and post it. But I am keeping that video for the rest of my life. And anytime I'm sad, I'm pulling that shit out. And I'm going to remember you, Patty, because, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Maybe she'll show up on House Hunters one day. <laughs> What would happen and you're if you taking accidentally one house one? You're taking house one. Yeah. Like, open concept. Oh, oh open concept. <laughs> and then one of the girls got dropped on that team. Like they were doing the, you know, the, oh, they no. throw them up in the air and then they have to catch them. And one of them fell. Like she, the one, I think one of the, cause you know, they put the bigger girls on the bottom. Also, it's very fat shaming cheer what they do. They put the girls who are built like brick houses on the bottom. Of, like you're just here to lift people. That fucking sucks, you know? So <laughs> it's like the, there's big girls, which is nice <laughs> to see because there's like a different variety of bodies and stuff like that. So that's actually nice to see. It's not like the stereotypical view of it like in our day uh, and it actually is nice to see but it's like come on like why don't you just have them out here building a brick wall you know what i mean that's it's just so rude <laughs> so anyway <laughs> they dropped one of the girls and i thought patty is gonna kill that girl like there she's patty's gonna ground that girl up into a hot dog and have her fed to the wolves <laughs> for for drop for being dropped yeah yeah you can't do that in cheer no that's terrible. that would get you that would get you booted off the team in my book. Yeah. Like I think got that's booted. a failure. Yeah. You. Oh, Bueller, Bueller has been no. uh, booted off the cheer team. You were off the cheer team. You fell. How could you fall? And you this, did. So this somehow has something to do with blow deck. I don't remember how we got. It really didn't. I just, you know what? Where else am I going to talk? I don't know anybody here. <laughs> <laughs> except my parents and my sister and my nieces like who else am i gonna they didn't think it was weird i had to tell you you're the only per- i told bueller he didn't give us look at his reaction he's literally yeah. yawning so you guys get Bueller's to hear it enough. sorry okay so below no, like deck it. season 11 episode 12 anthony is looking for an ice cream scoop yes this is the cliffhanger from last week will he find an ice cream scoop because that's the sort of show that this is like it's the only show on tv that could have us waiting an entire week to find an ice cream scoop. So he's looking. He's like, oh, mommy never told me what ice cream scoop is. And Fraser's like, where does your stuff go? Why is it disappearing? This sty, this disgusting galley. Where does your ice cream scoop go? What do- why don't you put it back in the drawer where it belongs every time? Fraser, the gaslighter, is just like, he can't find an ice cream scoop. He's legitimately lost his mind. I've called a psychologist to come on board and have him dragged away to the pits of hell, where they take psychologically unstable people without ice cream scoops. So he finally finds it, which because it's like on the table. And I had a very similar thought, which is like, I'm sure Fraser was hiding that scoop behind his back the entire time. And then the moment Anthony wasn't looking, Fraser just puts the scoop back onto the counter. I wouldn't be surprised. (laughs) It's the sort of like perverse psychological game that fraser would do uh just just to get by he's like well it's either do this or listen to bobby prattle on about who knows what so i think we play mind games with the chef Uh, so he sends up his chocolate lava cake now listen if you're getting in a lot of trouble for slacking off don't make lava cake you know lava cake is uncooked cake right (laughs) like we all we all know that that's where lava cake came from it was an undercooked 
cake that someone just happened to like. So now they call it lava cake. That's a lazy person's yeah. cake, guys. Lazy okay. cake. Lazy cake. It was like they took out the Z and the Y and changed it with a V and an A and made it lava. But it's still lazy. And uh, <laughs> also, those cakes are... <laughs> you like my letter joke? I do. And it's but also I... just that he can serve something in another fucking ramekin or round-shaped <laughs> Something thing. circle-shaped. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, though, that lava cakes... I've never made one. I've actually always wanted to. But I hear that they're actually surprisingly very difficult because... You know, if they're too loose, they don't hold their structure. And if they're too firm, they're they're not lava-y. They don't flow. So they're actually hard. So I'm like, you're probably just going to set yourself up for failure anyway, just by inherently making a lava cake. You know who just makes a, a general killer thought. lava cake? The best one I've you? ever had? Domino's. Your mom. Really? <laughs> it's incredible. It's really, I really love good. a lava cake. I, I actually mean, they really upset. brought corn syrup into it, which I think just okay. saves it. It saves the industry. It really does. The lava cake. I actually become a little persnickety when my lava cake doesn't flow. Because then I'm like, what's the point? Now I'm just having a mound of generic chocolate cake. Because when, if it's flowing, it's like delicious and special and just yeah. the best thing ever. But when it doesn't flow, it's like, you failed me. Yeah. <laughs> you failed me, restaurant. And you don't want to be a just lava cake. Because I feel like you look at it and you're like, fuck you, lava cake. And then you just eat it resentfully. It's like, nobody wants to be swallowed like that. Just being masticated no. in a in, in a disapproving bed way. I wouldn't want to be masticated like that. Look, no one cares about volcanoes if they're not flowing, right? If you go, you're like, oh, yeah. guess what? That volcano, that volcano, bitch, the patty volcano. Yeah, it's going off in Iceland again. So you we're go flowing. to Iceland, and then we're it's... flowing. We're volcanoes, and we're flowing. <laughs> like patty, we're not Plastic even the real volcano, patty. <laughs> Imagine you get so excited to go, you fly to Iceland to take footage of this volcano with lava streaming down. And you get there, and it's like the lava is all just now solidified. And it's just another just volcano sitting there. It's just not the same. No, it's not the same. Um, until your entire village gets burned because it goes off again. And and we're like, oh, we just built a home goods here. <laughs> that is crazy. The volca- I cannot believe that the volcano home goods just got burned in a, in a volcano. <laughs> So crazy. I knew we should never have let Patty propose where to put the next home goods. Patty. Patty would stand in front of the volcano just doing jumps and splits in the air. You're like, we're here to see the volcano, Patty. Okay? No one's here for you. <laughs> Fucking your child, you're, you wasted your youth, Patty. Let it go. <laughs> Fucking poor Patty, literally. Okay, That's why so- you can't drop the cheerleader, because you know what? If you drop the cheerleader, it could wind up. Going down into a volcano. I feel like that's what happened to Patty. She was the girl who dropped the cheerleader. And her life was never the the same again. And so now she's trying to do over just by having kids at truck stops. She's shoving into these competitions. trying. (laughs) Come on, kid. If you're real good, I'll take you to the volcano in Iceland. If there's anybody who's given birth in a Bucky's parking lot, it's Patty. I'm just telling you that right now. (laughs) I recognized her. That little baby was swallowed in a sweatshirt that said something like, Jesus provides <laughs> and give it a piece of fudge to gnaw on. Oh. Um, so Anthony's like, Oh, this day is not good. I fought the blanche and dinner. I feel like heartbreak inside to make amazing food. I need to feel very happy and I am very sad. So my food sucks. Oh, no, your food needs to be good even when you're sad. Okay. So yeah. What the fuck is this? Stop. Stop with this. I just already went uh, spent my summer house recap telling um telling this generation to fucking buck up and stop sobbing i don't care that you're sad i don't care your childhood sucks i need better mac and cheese bitch we also (laughs) sorry i think that did you hear the vacuum (laughs) turn off right when i screamed bitch (laughs) i hope they don't know but i like i like that just that extra bit that extra bit of venom but um i think we all know the best chefs are deeply sad Right. I mean, how many episodes of Top Chef do we have to watch where someone's like, yeah, man, I was addicted to heroin. And I don't know, I spent years going around Denmark, living out of the van, cooking herring and getting tattoos. <laughs> cooking herring. <Love> herring. <laughs> That's why I've got a <laughs> herring tattooed on my ankle. Um, look, I, I, herring. I like angry chefs. I feel like chefs are angry. I don't need a depressed chef. I don't want to eat your depression. I want to eat your anger. Like that's that's filling. You know what I mean? Depression's not filling. I mean, you just it's empty calories depression. But yeah, anger, I think chefs are good angry. I don't think they're good sad. Like I don't think 
they don't give up. Like you're supposed to be like, yeah, I was a heroin addict and I have five children that I left in Alaska, but I'm going to cook the best meal just to prove my art. You know, there's like something to prove where Anthony's just like, I'm so sad. So I don't do anything good. Like, no, that's you're fired. And I've been sticking up for you the whole season. But at this point, if you're going to blame bad food on trauma, I can't. Trauma should be growing beautiful flowers. Okay. Look what it did for me. Yeah. And the truth is that on Top Chef, anytime a chef becomes sad because they miss their child, because it's always the child and, and, and like the spouse, it's always like, I just, I really, I really miss like Salt Shaker. She's just like so beautiful. And like, I just, she's my inspiration every day. It's like, you're going home. You, you cried over your child that you named Salt Shaker. Yeah, exactly. Bye. Go yeah. back to Salt Bye. Shaker. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even care. She's in kindergarten. Being made fun of. <laughs> um, so Fraser goes up to Barb and goes, Darling, I'm really, really proud of you. And she's like, thanks. He's like, stupid bitch doesn't even understand sarcasm. Hmm. Um, and then he basically goes to bed. And he's like, one hot mess of an evening. So the guests are changing. And, and Graham is um, just like, <laughs> we got internet. I'm going on Grinder. I need Grinder. 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 Could you imagine? <laughs> this is why I don't go on Grinder. You need to feel the intensity of this person. If you just saw the, a still on Grinder, you'd be like, oh, great. And then you get this showing up at your house. I need to see you in action. I can't just have you showing up after after. Yeah, I don't still. need. I don't need a cracked out llama in a bikini brief. <laughs> Fucking bad, arriving at my door, head, crazy face showing up at my door. Okay, no. Um, so basically, it's late at night, and they're all partying. And the primary, the husband, uh, his name is Ray. I called him like King or Husband for half the half of my notes, but his name is Ray. And um, he's like, uh, you know what I want right now? I want some lobster. And Barbie's like, um, well, uh, the chef is asleep, but like, I can make something. I'm just like not a very good chef. Like, would you be interested in like Diet Coke? I was taught how to make good ones of those recently. And they're like, well, what about fries? We love French fries. She's like, yeah, I don't really know how to make French fries from scratch. Um, how about Ritz crackers? Do you like Ritz crackers? <laughs> These guests, seriously? It's two in the morning and you're asking for lobster? No. And then when she says no, Carmen's like, ah, oh, like, sorry. I know that yeah. you guys have seen Below Deck on TV. You've never seen that. So give me a fucking break. Get over yourself. These guests are monsters. They, they are they are monsters. Well, it's weird because I feel like they seem like in some ways like really fun, sweet people. And then, but then I feel like they're just trying to test the limit of what they can order because you see the way they downgrade immediately from like, how about some lobster at two a.m.? Like, sorry, we can't do that. How about fries? <laughs> they just go from lobster down to fries. And like, I, you know, I have to say, there it feels like there should be some like or riot of French fries in the freezer that they can just that Barbie can put in the oven and bring out to them. Like yeah. not even deep fried, just like there should be a late night French fry option. I'm sorry. There well, also, be. and and I'm mostly saying this because of the lobster. Cause they were like, there's no lobster, which I thought was ridiculous. Now, as far as other stuff, okay. Asking for snacks, isn't that crazy? And they're not monsters for that. But what is this thing with we don't wake up the chef? Wake up the fucking chef. Yes, know, you wake do. Wake up the chef. Uh, he's done nothing but serve shit in circles. And he needs to be woken up at this point. He's fucked up enough times that they need to be waking up Anthony. I don't know where this whole, like, we protect our chefs. No, you don't. You throw your chefs to the wolves and you ruin their careers and their lives. You're below deck. He stayed up to like four in the morning sweeping the other night. He can be, he can wake up. So, um, so then the lady, Carmen's like, ma'am, you're telling me you don't know how to make fries. And Barbie's like, mm, what about sandwiches? Like some hot sandwiches? Which is, by the way, funny. When Barbie says sandwiches, she almost sounds like she's saying sandwiches. I had to go back several times. I was like, were you saying sandwiches? Like, I thought it was a me? specific kind of s sandwich? Because she was saying sandwich. <laughs> she's like, you want a sandwich? You want a sandwich? A sandwich. Like, is it like yeah. maybe? <laughs> That's cute. But I was like, maybe just me. Like, oh, I thought it was I like a, a sandwich. I'm going to look it up because it sounded like she was actually saying, do you want a sandwich? And I thought, oh, I wonder if that's like a slang for something. Let me see what it is. Sandwich. I wanted a <laughs> sandwich, but asked a for witch a sandwich instead. Sandwich versus sandwich. I've pronounced the word sandwich wrong ever since I can remember. I only realized it last year when a friend mentioned 
Oh God! Well, now let me. Oh God! It's a whole article, Lala? you guys. This is like a four article. two page article. Is this like in Slate? Like things I learned when I was saying sandwich. Apparently, it's a common mispronunciation within the Italian American community in Jersey, New York, Canada, and also some Spanish speakers. So there you go. She's oh, Spanish. there we go. Yeah. Who knew? Sandwich. You know, apparently, I say costume incorrectly. Like I guess it, you say it's supposed to be costume, but I always say costume. <laughs> Costume. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I say costume too sometimes. You say water incorrectly. You say water. 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 I'm no, not York. incorrectly. That's how we say it here. Just differently accented. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You're not wrong. Differently just accented. You're, you're not wrong just because you're, you know, incorrect. You're, I'm sorry. Like, as far as I can tell, um, like New York, New York was probably a pioneer in water, water <laughs> commentary. <laughs> water. Water. Well, you guys water. have been bragging about your water for long enough that you should all know how to pronounce it. It's like the biggest New York <laughs> brag ever. We have the best water. water. We have the best water. Yeah, water. you guys love your tap water. Um, okay, so <clears throat> Fraser. So Bar I'm sorry. So Barbie is like you know, anytime anyone tells Barbie to do something, she gets massively offended. Uh, in this case, Carmen is being like, she's like, you better have some shit that I fucking like. But I couldn't tell if Carmen was like. Was she joking or was she just being really rude? I couldn't tell. I felt like she was being really rude, but there was part of me that was like, maybe she's joking and the producers have just like stripped out all the context. So she looks like a monster. Well, she. I mean, I know I called them monsters already, but now thinking back on the episode, she's been, they pissed her off a lot. <laughs> So at this point, I feel like she has she's like justified. Very I feel like Ray isn't as much. I'm still kind of annoyed with Ray, and I I was on but his side mostly with later. the Brandon argument, but I'm still like side eyeing Ray. Like to be honest, and to ask for lobster at two in the morning, I think is ridiculous. Also because she's the sports agent, not you, Ray. You know, so like <laughs> Carmen, I accept a little more, but Carmen, Carmen's whole thing, she keeps saying, I'm the primary and you're going to tell me you don't have fries. Well, she doesn't have fries for the non-primaries either. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I still stick with they should just wake up the chef. Yeah, they should, because they're obviously these people are upset and they want something that's not a circle. Because, you know, by the way, maybe don't wake up the chef because he's going to serve them circle fries. <laughs> he They'll will. Just be like, He'll be like, oh, I give them potato. Cut with circle. <laughs> Barbie's like, very rude. Like, that's not cool. Like, we're here, like, to serve you, but this is so extra. These charter guests are batshit crazy. I hope they choke on the sandwich. So, <laughs> she's, Barbie's, like, in the, uh, she's in the, she's trying to make sand sandwiches with Kyle, and, like, she really has no idea what's going on. She is, she's, like, very confused. She's like, I mean, I grew up with nannies who cooked. I don't, I don't even know how to make a peanut butter and jelly. I'm like, girl, I love a highfalutin maid. I love like I love being <laughs> served a peanut butter and jelly sandwich from someone in a fur coat. You know what I mean? I love not knowing how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. The recipe is in the name. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they give it the fancy dish treatment. You know, they they like that was photograph so it. Funny. They bring in like Ann Gettys <laughs> to photograph it. <laughs> <laughs> they did like the full like depth of field like the like the the top chef treatment and it says Barbie's BLT with a cherry tomato and romaine garnish. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Well, I'm getting to that age now, Ronnie, where I see myself on camera and I can see the back of my head. The hair is thinning out. And honestly, I mean, I have to imagine that the past few years, the stress in our world, in our lives, has impacted it. I mean, your hair is never just about your hair, and Nutrafol knows that. It could be your job, your deodorant, your hormones. It could be almost anything that has almost nothing to do with your hair. And that's why Nutrafol takes a whole body approach to hair health, addressing the problems inside to help hair grow on the outside, supporting your lifestyle, not just your hairstyle. With Nutrafol, building a hair growth routine is simple. Purchase online, no prescription or doctor's visits required. Free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you will never miss a day. See results in three to six months. Address your root causes of hair thinning with Nutrafol. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code CRAPINS. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code CRAPINS. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code CRAPINS. 
Hungry Root is the easiest way to eat healthy. They send you fresh, high-quality groceries, simple recipes, and essential supplements. It's like your personal assistant for healthy living. So you take a fun, short quiz, and Hungry Root will get to know your personal health goals, what you like to eat, and more. And then they'll build you a personalized cart with all your grocery needs for the week and give you a delicious recipe recommendations to put those groceries to use. Each order is fully customizable, so you can take their suggestions or choose anything you want. Uh, we love this place. It's like, I like eating this, this, and this. I'm a vegetarian. Eat some fish sometimes. They send you all these groceries that all fit into exactly what you like. Yeah, I have an issue with snacking in that I always want to snack, but I often snack on things that aren't always as good for me. And it was really great to get all sorts of healthy, nutritious snacks from Hungry Root. Right now, Hungry Root is offering Watcher Crappens listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash Crappens to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's HungryRoot.com slash Crappens. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. So she brings it out, and uh, then she doesn't even bring a napkin to, to Ray, so... Anyway, they go to sleep. And Kyle, who's up and has been helping, is like, Barbie's totally different from the girls I went for in the past. She's so high strong and I'm vertical. And then, like, she's so um, she's so high strong that she's, like, vertical. And I'm so laid back that I'm horizontal. It's weird because she's got a hold on me. Vertical, horizontal, brigadoon, things like that. <sighs> and she's like, I definitely have feelings for Kyle, but it's, like, uh, kind of, a, like, a thing. Like, I'm really not understanding what I'm feeling. So I mean, like, sometimes... Barbie is so made for reality <laughs> TV the way she's like, she first came in and she's like, my storyline is going to be fighting with the chief stew. Then she's like, mm, I really don't like that story. I'm not really winning in that storyline. I'm going to have a romantic storyline now. She's like, gets so into it. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. Now it's the morning and Dylan is gossiping with Sandy and Afrikaans. And uh, he's like, well, Benny lectured me last night. And I guess one of the crew members say I'm not, that I'm not happy. And, you know, I want, and I want to talk, I'm sorry, Ben, I, I said wrote down Benny, but I meant Ben is now talking to Sonny and in the, in the crew mess. And he says, well, I want to talk to Dylan Underpants this morning, which I guess that's his nickname, Dylan Underpants, because he's telling people, oh, Sonny's only lead deckhand because she's fucking Ben. Like, excuse me, are you the bosun here? You're really gonna, like, you're trying to have a cohesive team, and you're just gonna, you're gonna breed this, like, toxicity in your team? It's not good what Dylan said. It's not an, it's not saying we have to protect Dylan, but you're just gonna make Sonny feel like shit about her promotion and make Sonny get mad at Dylan. Like, that's not how you build your team up. Yeah, yeah, he's bad at this. So um, she's like, uh, well, he needs to take a seat because we had a relationship before he became the bosun. So, uh, there. I was like, yeah, but he still promoted the person he's fucking. I, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really, that really doesn't win. But Dylan gets so gross about it that I'm swinging back to Sonny's side on this one. And, I know, well, really I'm never not on her side. I mean, it's not her fault for taking the job, but you know, I don't know. Still, Dylan was pretty gross about it. Yeah, he, like I understand why he may have felt frustration because he felt like, oh, I know more. Like I know more. It feels like she's only gotten this position because she has a like a tighter relationship. But he was pretty gross in the way he said it last week. Oh, if I had a vagina, then I would have gotten it. It's like, ooh, like let's not be like a pig about this situation. Yeah. And she's like, and besides, it's not just the bosun's decision, it's the captain's decision. So stay in your lane. Oh, well, does the captain know you guys are fucking? Because that might <laughs> just, just throwing in there at that point. I mean, if we're going to keep it in there, that that's part of the decision making process. Because I still think it's fishy that uh, that Ben did that, you know. But again, that's Ben. That's yeah, not Ben, not necessarily. I think it's a strange decision. So then, um, but also at the end of the day, it's like the head broom. You know, so like, can we all calm down? <laughs> it's like, by you, the way, you get to boss people around with a squeegee more. Do you understand? <laughs> You're the head squeegee. By the way, I just would like to say, on Laren, sick you still kill Lareny, Billy Yodorn, which means, of course, I did know they were fucking in Turkish. <laughs> oh, here's another thing. So, this is kind of a spoiler. Well, I don't know if it's a spoiler because I haven't heard anything. I just saw a headline on Facebook. So, if anybody doesn't want to hear this, fast forward right now for 30 seconds. 
Go. Okay. Okay. So I read this Facebook group headline. I'm not even a member of this group. It just shows me whatever is in this group. And it says she that uh, Zandi didn't appear on Watch What Happens Live at the last second because she leaves the show, which doesn't make sense. And this is a very clickbaity Facebook group. And they're always posting shit. I'm only bringing it up because A, we can't lose Zandi. I love Zandi. But B, Every time you, I don't know what really happens because every time you click on the website, all of their ads are for skin disease. Have you ever seen one of these websites? It's all ads that pop up and it's people with yeah. like white heads popping out of their Excellent. face or like ripples of blackheads up and down their skin. It's disgusting. It is the most disgusting shit I've ever seen. And it, you can't click off of it. <laughs> like it, it traps you oh. inside. And so every time I'm like, oh, I want to hear this Bravo news. I never know if it's real or not because it's all the skin disease shit. Have you ever seen it? Because it needs to stop. I've seen I need those someone where it's to help like, me. I've definitely been on those sites where it's like, it's, I feel like it's like on CNN a lot. Like you'll be reading an article and as you get to the bottom, you know you're at the end of the article because all of a sudden at the bottom, it's like it's like an elderly lady holding up her arm and her arm has red blotches on it. It's like, has this mm -hmm. happened to you? I'm yeah. like, okay, well, I guess that's the end of the story. Yes, um, but it's a whole page and you can't, like it'll start staying in the center of the page. You know how when you scroll up, it'll the ads will stay center? Like it won't let you yeah. look? Oh, it's disgusting. And like they pick the most disgusting diseases to have to anyway. Please stop, you guys, because I don't know the ending. I don't know if that's true gossip or if it's just clickbait because I can't stare at the skin disease. Okay. Yeah. That would be wild, but it still doesn't make sense. If the first thing you said, if if she does leave the show, it doesn't make make sense why she would suddenly drop out of watch what happens well, live. Yeah, because this so, was shot like a one, year ago, right? Who knows, five, ten years ago. <laughs> So Shelly Dylan, Long was still on Cheers when this was shot, guys. It takes a while for yeah. these to come come through the funnel. Rhea Perlman's the next charter guest. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what was I made for? <laughs> I was I landed in New York and I was in J the JFK terminal, walking like through to get out of the terminal, and that song was playing, and I was like, I could not like, could you not play something so fucking dreary at the airport, like? It's like, welcome to New York City. What was I made for? I'm like, I don't. I'll tell you what I was made for. Get into my Uber. Can you put some? Can, why can't? Why can't you play like Aretha Franklin and George Michael? Uh, yeah, like, something. I knew you were waiting. That would actually be a really good song for the Uber area. It's like, I knew you were waiting. I knew you were waiting for me. Like the perfect taxi song. I think they should always just have the. Uh, the Bill de Blasio taxi cab recording playing where it's like, <laughs> welcome to New York City. I'm Mayor Bill de Blasio. We <laughs> hope you enjoy your time here. The sights and the sounds of New York <laughs> City. I didn't fall down when the river was deep. I still believed when the mountain was high. I did. That's Bill de Blasio uh, <laughs> doing a karaoke version of Aretha Franklin and George Michael. Anyone? Bueller? Literally Bueller? Oh. Um, so, <laughs> by the way. The river is deep. The mountain is high. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think as an experiment, and I encourage everyone to do this as well, the next time you get off of a plane, have that song queued up and just press play as you walk off the plane. I feel I feel like it would be the most amazing experience to walk off a plane listening to that song. Which one? Respect. Do you know what song I'm talking about, by the way? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? No, I sound out. What was it? <laughs> it's the Bill de Blasio <laughs> voice. I literally <laughs> got like tired. I don't know how he was ever the mayor. The Aretha Franklin. Are of the course, Aretha I've heard Franklin the Aretha. and George Mike. Yeah, that's saying. Imagine pressing play the moment you step off an airplane with that song like that's probably an amazing getting off an airplane song <laughs> think about it okay um just try I'll petition it. that i'll petition for that so i'm gonna um, call it the the aretha george michael Ch airplane challenge <laughs> and it could become <laughs> viral on tiktok <laughs> So Dylan is now talking to Zandi. He's still talking to Zandi. He's like, um, I'm in trouble about this whole thing about saying she only got it because of her vagina. And she's like, here's what you do. You need to go tell. You need to say that you are sorry you said it and that's it. You didn't mean it. And she's like, I want to smack him, but I still love him all the time. I still love that guy. He's like my little brother. So um, 
Paris wakes up and bonks her head against the bunk bed. And then Sunny is, of course, like really like she's frustrated and angry at Dylan. So she's being really frosty to him. And then Fraser goes and checks in on Anthony. And um, Anthony's talking about how he wants to make chili and mac and cheese today uh, because there's going to be a beach picnic. So Fraser's like, well, I don't think it's going to be a smart idea to cook on the beach. Okay. Because guess what? No ice cream scoops on the beach. Can't find them there. Oh. So, it's like, could you just cook it here and then we can throw it on the grill at the beach? And he's like, hmm, you live sad, you die sad. That's all I can say. <laughs> Is that a yes? I'm just saying depression is not just a river in Egypt. All right, so can you <laughs> cook here and throw it on the grill? That What are you saying? What are you talking about? I'll do it for daddy. Okay, then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then he says, yeah. And then he like nearly knocks a bowl over in the process of saying, yeah. And they show that footage like five times during the episode of him going, yeah, and then knocking a bowl. <laughs> they really slammed him with like, here is the footage on why he should get fired. I mean, they were getting him with stuff I didn't think was very fair. Like the guy <laughs> not really, understanding what tuna tartare is, isn't really his fault, you guys. You know what right. I mean? And then they're like, and look at the bowl. The bowl almost happened. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> the bowl almost happened. There was almost that empty bowl almost fell onto the floor. Yeah, so I get rid of him, kill him. Let's get him. Uh, so now the guests wake up, and um, they the special is an eggs Benedict, which, as we all know, eggs Benedict, a classic version, is served with Canadian ham. And um, so I applaud that they are trying to not have a million orders by focusing everyone's attention into the special. But why do a special whose main ingredient, one, one of the main ingredients is something that the primary doesn't eat and you were not able to find a substitute for? Why would you do that? Also, why, why something named after the most disgusting person on the boat? You know what I mean? It's gross. <laughs> Um, why so, after a, why after a famed American trader too? By the way, <laughs> exactly. So um, <laughs> Karma cracks me up because you know, she's Revolutionary like, War. Anyone? Well, yeah, no, I was with you. Um, um, I Benedict watched Arnold? the whole television show about that. It was so good. Patriot, really was, good. Oh, what that was that about Benedict Arnold? Well, it was about that time. It was about that war in general. He was oh. in it. Benedict had a part. I mean, it wasn't about him, <laughs> but he was in it. He was a character. <laughs> Was it Benedict Cumberbatch playing Benedict Arnold? No, no, him I'm done with fucking Benedict Cumberbatch. He really fell from grace with me with the second part of the Dr. Shivago in space or whatever his Marvel character is. Dr. Strange. Yeah. By the way, can we come up with better names for our superheroes than Dr. Strange? It's a little They're running low. Yeah. They're they're running (laughs) low. It's a little on the nose, Dr. Strange. Uh Who's going to go see that doctor anyway, by the way? It's like... Oh, I have this, uh, you may have seen on the internet, I have this really bad skin condition. Um, I'm going to go see Dr. Strange about it. <laughs> Dr. Strange? Yeah. Here's oh my God, go. Ben, this summer we should go see Mr. Loves Dairy. That's me. I'm like, that's my superpower. Mr. Dairy. Loves dairy. I don't, I'll eat dairy any time of the day. <laughs> well, there is a show called Dairy Girls, but it's spelled D-E-R-R-Y. Yeah, that's different. It's British. Okay, different. so uh, we're going there soon. <laughs> European tour. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to um, be Dairy Girls. Listen, guys, the important part is eggs Benedict have ham. Okay, so Carmen, <laughs> this is Carmen. I love you know Carmen. Her crew pisses me off, but I do like Carmen because she says things like this. Okay, well, I don't eat ham, so can I have turkey or beef bacon or a crab cake? The fuck did crab cake come from? No, you can't just have well, a crab cake. <laughs> what are, think, crab cakes are I something you reason- just pull out of the out of the fridge. Okay, like you're on a yacht, you're literally surrounded by no. those crabs around. Crab cakes take time. Listen, here's why I don't think it's wild because a lot of brunch places offer crab cake Benedict. They just have them. And so well, I if think it's on if the menu, yeah, they've prepared crab cakes. But well, but I, I think just... if you're on a super yacht, remember that woman who was on Below Deck Med one time? She goes, it's a super yacht. It's a super yacht. Yeah, you made a whole so, remix of her. I made a remix. I made. It was, <laughs> I literally it's watched that remix the other day. Super yacht. It's a super, <laughs> super yacht. I, 
<laughs> I'm so like, flattered s- that you remembered s- my s- remix. S- <laughs> I did make a remix of her saying, I was, The other day I was going through our Instagram trying to find the video I made of Hilaria Baldwin as a stupid real housewife. It's not even a good video. It's like two seconds long. And it turns out I posted it on my own personal TikTok, which is why I couldn't find it. Anyway, I was scrolling through our TikTok and I was watching all the videos that we posted over the years. And that one I watched, I think, 10 times in a row. I was laughing so hard. Yeah, I just found it the other day. I have no idea where the file is. And I was like, this was actually a really, I did a really good job with this it remix, so actually. Funny. I okay, wish I had it. So, I would play it right um, now. Now we see the flashback. Okay, so Anthony, Paris tells Anthony, the chef, she's like, the plumber is asking if we have beef and talk biking. He's like, no, I asked, but they do not have it. And then we see a flashback of Fraser being like, duck bacon, we're not going to get that here, are we? <laughs> okay, I understand duck bacon may be a tough request. I've never even heard of I've that. Little, I've never heard of it. But turkey like, bacon. Literally never heard of it. Like, yeah. But like turkey bacon, you Everyone, can get everywhere. Yeah, I'm everyone's sorry. got a Mima. There's a Mima in every port that needs a turkey bacon. Because <laughs> that was my Mima. Like, oh, your dad, your grand, your papa won't have another heart attack if it's just turkey bacon. I was like, that's literally the only thing you're changing in his entire diet. Like, he's still drinking Crisco milkshakes. Like, you can't just, like, switch out the turkey and that's going to change everything. Yeah, I, like, literally, I'm sorry. I know we're in the Caribbean and we're on small islands, etc. But if the provisioners can provide literally all this other food, they can get their hands on some Oscar Mayer turkey bacon. Yeah, And the fact that they just didn't even do that, that's just so, I'm sorry. I'm on Team Carmen for this one. Okay, like, I'm sure, back to maybe Carmen. the crab cake, Carmen. Maybe the crab cake was, like, a wild request. I just, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a, out of left field requests because if there's for me it's just serve, a timing place, thing it's it's people who don't yeah. understand timing it's like you see the chef is already kind of a mess which is granted is not their fault but <laughs> the fact that it's just like 2 a.m and they're like i want lobster no that's not how lobster works or it's like <laughs> okay eggs benedict so this somewhat difficult breakfast is about to come down the pike you know just make mine with a crab cake it's just crab cakes don't don't come out of thin air that's all i'm saying but, you know, he has been fucking up a lot, so. Imagine if they did. Man, that would be a life. Crab cakes just coming out of thin air. <laughs> <laughs> the sequel. There would be so to, many car wrecks. Uh, They'd be like, I'm sorry, officer. <laughs> crab cake came out of thin air. I thought Cloudy I was going to hit it. Cloudy with a chance of crab cake. <laughs> <laughs> Cloudy with a chance of crab laugh cakes. today. <laughs> I literally, t- I'll tell you what came out of thin air. My smokers laugh right there. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I found the mega yacht thing here. I'm going to play it just okay. for fun of it because why not? Okay. Running mega yacht. I get it. Sorry. Running mega yacht. Running <laughs> mega yacht. I get it. Sorry. Running mega yacht. Running mega yacht. I get it. Sorry. Running mega yacht. Running mega yacht. I get it. Sorry. Running mega yacht. Running mega yacht. I get it. Sorry. Running mega yacht. Running mega yacht. I get it. Sorry. Running mega yacht. I don't need to have a mega yacht. I get it. Terrible. <laughs> this is not okay. I don't need so That was terrible. This is not okay. I don't need Mega yacht. Sorry. Mega yacht. That was terrible. I missed that. I was going to be That's when it really takes off when the when it repeats the <laughs> verse and she comes back in with It's a mega yacht. I die. <laughs> I don't eat pets. Oh, and I, I, I feel like just listening to it as audio only, you don't realize how many times you hear Sandy say, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, get I'm sorry. I get it. I get it. <laughs> that was terrible. Okay, enough self-congratulations. So, crab cakes, am I right? Out of thin air. It's basically the new Cowboy Carter. It's like the original yeah. Cowboy Carter. <laughs> Miley Cyrus and that woman are gonna do a are gonna do a, a duet together. <laughs> Commercials. Here comes one right now. Angie's list is now Angie, and we've heard a lot of theories about why. 
I thought it was an eco move. Fewer words, less paper. No, it was so you could say it faster. No, it's to be more iconic. Must be a tech thing. But those aren't quite right. It's because now you can compare upfront prices, book a service instantly, and even get your project handled from start to finish. Sounds easy. It is. And it makes us so much more than just a list. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. Okay, so um, Anthony no blames ba- a provisioner no. um, for not right. having turkey bacon. So he goes up and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry for turkey bacon, but in the Caribbean, I tried to order everything. It's not available. And she's like, oh, my God, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. Okay? <laughs> Just please be yeah. prepared with a stuffed donkey tonight for dinner. <laughs> If, if we need it, last second. <laughs> and then it just cuts out to Captain Carey looking out over the ocean and going, well, there's a big vessel coming in. He might be further away there than I think. Adventure! Adventure! <laughs> so now it's time for a beach picnic. Okay, so Ben pulls Dylan aside for the talk. And he's like, so I hear you called Sonny a stupid slut. <laughs> and uh, Dylan's like, well, I just said what I thought, and the lead deckhand has to be a person leading the other two deckhands, where to like the detail and uh, where to detail and everything like that. And you know, I have, you know, I've got the experience in how the stuff works. Plus, also, I used to be fat, and now I'm thin, and I know how to wash the calories off of ham. <laughs> and Ben's like, all right, well, you may know a lot more than Sunny, and I assume you do, but that's not. I don't just go off experience, all right? Now, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That's that's a terrible thing to go off in jobs. Glad you <laughs> glad you completely disregard that, Ben. You know what? When you're when you're when you're when you're controlling a vessel that could possibly sink and kill everyone on board, it's good not to always rely on experience. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and he I love that he's still he's like, "Well, you know, of course oh, I have been sleeping with her. That's true, but for me it's about attitude." You know, and I think she knows a little bit more about the boat than you do. She certainly knows more about my stick shift. You know what? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, I have more, uh, when he says it's not going off experience for me, it's about the attitude. The attitude is she's sleeping with you. Period. This is not. I don't know how he expected this to go any other way. I think yeah. he shouldn't even be confronting uh, Dylan. But I think he should say, "Hey, I think you," which is confronting him to say, "Listen, I hear you've got a problem with it. I know it seems." Like it's because I'm sleeping with her, but I'm not. But for him to be defensive about it is kind of gross. Because, of course, it's going to look like that. You're sleeping with her and you gave her the promotion, dude. Which is why you shouldn't sleep with the people who work under you. So, um, and again, it's not her fault. This is Ben. Ben is just like, he can't believe that there's a consequence to his actions. Mm-hmm. So Dylan's like, well, I'm sorry I offended you in any way. I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep it up and I'm going to keep doing my best, bro. So um, then Barbie and Fraser are going to go to the beach with the guests and everything. Um, And Anthony, so the whole thing was Anthony was supposed to cook his food ahead of time instead of going onto the beach. Am I going to sneeze? Am I going to sneeze? Am I going to sneeze on a mega yacht? It's a mega yacht. Okay. I said mega yacht enough that the sneeze went away. (laughs) A mega yacht. So Anthony, of course, somehow all that, Eggs Benedicting took up so much time that he doesn't have time to cook some steaks in the background. How do you not have time to throw some steaks on the grill in your galley? So he's like, no, daddy's not an octopus. I only have two arms. I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> what are you doing with your arms? <laughs> Make your arms do better things. Yeah. Um, so, and at this point, it's really weird because people are telling him things and then he's acting like no one's ever said anything to him, which is bizarre. Yeah. Like, can he just suddenly not hear? I mean, if it was one time, you could be like, maybe it's a language barrier thing. Cause later in the episode, he's, he insists that he never heard the word lobster, you know? But yeah, yeah at this point, it's just kind of diabolical. It's, like, it's almost like he's trying to get fired. It's weird. I'm not sure what, what he's doing. I just don't understand how hard it is. Like, while you're making your mac and cheese, you just like you fire up your flat top, and you put your steaks on it, and you put your lobster on it, and that just you don't have to do anything. They just go, and then you deal with your mac and cheese. Which, by the way, you run the risk of cooking that too early anyway, and therefore it dries out. Well, also steaks you don't just re-grill, do you? I don't think you just 
cook no, steak you don't, and then but like, it. Or a lobster. I don't think you can do that with lobster either because it gets rubber, rubbery. But I, but you know, that was my first thought. But then looking at that grill, it's like this is probably not the strongest grill in the world. It's like one of those electric ones. Yeah. So you probably just would be essentially reheating it, which I think is probably okay. Yeah. So Fraser is like, oh my god, did anything I say register? And then we see a shot of that bowl almost being knocked over. I'm like, uh oh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the bowl. <laughs> so now the guests go to the beach. And Fraser has a great attitude about it. I have never been less excited in my entire life. <laughs> and um, Anthony is like, now they, they get to the beach at one. And of course, Anthony puts the stakes on when the guests get there. Anthony was, was even there ahead of time. Even if, he, even if he was of the mindset of what you just said, which is like, you can't just like cook steak ahead of time and then re-grill it. At least get that grill going. Like, why are you putting the steaks on as soon as they arrive? Come on. Like, that's, those are thick steaks. You need to get them going ahead of time. Yeah. So then back on the boat, Paris and Sandy are cleaning, and Paris is like, you know, when you're dating a guy and they do something that makes you hate them, like, we split the bill, but you owe me three bucks. Don't even. So that was a little something from a gay icon to the cruise, a little freebie there. You can go and tell your friends you heard it from, from me. Hmm. They'll love it. Uh, and now the grill, of course, back on the beach, the grill's taking forever. Guests are getting hungry. And um, and so Paris radios over. She's like, hello. Hi, beach party, beach party. This is Paris. Just told a great story about how when you date someone and then they do something you don't like, it's like gross. You know what I'm saying? All right. Anyway, what time will the guests be back on the boat? And Fraser, of course, is like, well, the food is still on the grill. So we are behind by at least half an hour. That's 30 minutes that we are delayed. Please let everyone in Grenada and any nearby islands know that we are slow because of the chef. And if a captain overhears this, so be it. That's not my intention, but, you know, things happen, etc. He's like, I just want to say on this radio, I hope that we have some privacy here because I just want to say, Bucephlerin Hatasi. Right. So, oh, wait a minute. That means it's all the chef's fault. We're going to ever talk about this later. <laughs> so uh, Barbie's telling Fraser that the guests are driving, like drove her nuts last night and everything. And then Ray is, they're eating their mac and cheese. And so the mac and cheese is like a strange shaped noodle. I was like, Okay, well, I'm that? back on the chef's side for this. Because now the guests are like, I'm not eating this mac and cheese. Disgusting noodle. This isn't a mac and cheese noodle. Guys, it's called chefery. It's the same. Okay. It's it's a play on mac and cheese, darling. Why does it have to be the same little tiny noodle? Give me a break. It doesn't have to be an elbow. Okay. I do mine with penne, personally. Or a rigatoni I, if I'm feeling really crazy. And guess what? It's fucking delicious. I did think it was actually a fascinating shape because he basically took bucatini and cut it in half. He broke it in half. And so it's like these... It was like long noodles that are longer than a short noodle, like a rigatoni, but not as long as a long noodle like a spaghetti but they were hollow on the inside so it was kind of cool but yeah sometimes people can become extremely rigid about mac and cheese and it's like i hope you realize that elbows have no different flavor than literally any other pasta shape <laughs> it's just a shape thing they're yeah. like no boo gross yeah so they will they're like that is disgusting and carmen's like i mean it's like he had regular noodles and cut them up yeah, guys, so this is not the hill to die on, okay? Because at the end of the day, bad mac and cheese is still mac and cheese, okay? Let's move on to well, the rubbery lobster, because you know that lobster is coming out rubbery. Yeah, well, I was going to say, that being said, the mac and cheese did not look good. <laughs> it looked good when he was making it, but like the thing with mac and cheese is that if you make it too early, I think the pasta absorbs a lot of the liquid or whatever. It just sort of becomes like... It doesn't become gooey. Like the gooiness goes away, the creaminess goes away. It just sort of becomes like mealy, maybe, or it's like that kind of texture. Ugh, and it kind of looked sound. like it. That's what had happened to it, you know. Well, I'll tell you this much: um, I don't appreciate mac and cheese being disparaged. So um, we go to Fraser and Barbie, <laughs> and um, he's like, "Oh, they're not happy with their food. Call a psychiatrist. We need to get this man." In some way. Our tip is going to suck. And it's all because he's gone psychopathic. Um, so then we see the interior working on welcome drinks. And um, the guests coming back to the boat for their shots of their gummy bear shots. Which Yeah. 
disgusting. Um, that was a cute and Fraser's idea, being but really- I, I was surprised that Brandon didn't just start choking. <laughs> it just seemed like something like a bobblehead, like Brandon would be like, oh my God, <laughs> shots. I've seen these on Grindr before. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is the guy i totally hooked up with last night on grinder it's like it's a gummy bear yeah exactly you never swallowed bear before? <laughs> fraser's like and by the way fraser has such a pissy attitude right now he's like let's get let's get the guests back to the boat where we know they can enjoy themselves instead of having this terrible half broken bucatini mac and cheese and slow steak am i right and someone goes, "Oh, welcome back to the boat, guess. How you did you enjoy your did you enjoy your time?" And someone goes, "The mac and cheese was questionable, but I made do." <laughs> like, great. <laughs> enjoy your shot. Well, how did the beach go, Fraser? He goes, "Well, the meal took its time and I don't think the guests particularly enjoyed it, but what I can't stand is having guests there and watching Chef not being able to do stuff. He spent a half an hour looking for ice cream scoop up in a palm tree. It was just frustrating. Yeah, and um, the the captain's like, now listen, every day I've tried to give this man a chance, but now I'm going through CVs like a man in a jungle taking pieces of paper and swapping them back and back and making my way through piece of paper after piece of paper. We're going to find that one man with a curved knife and an attitude to slay the world. We're going to find a chef and we're going to find an adventure. (laughs) Just hire a fucking chef for Christ's sake, sir. Captain Carey was like, listen, Every single day, Anthony's been on the boat. I've had had to give him guidance, and I'm fine with that if you learn from everything that we talk about. But if one person can't run at the same speed as the rest of us, I'm like, oh, he's going to say, it's our job as a team to rally around them and pick them up and make sure they can come with us. And he goes, if they can't run at the same speed as us, we got to leave them behind. First rule of adventure. You got to make it out alive. You can't if you can't hack it. You don't have to be the fastest one on the adventure. You just have to be faster than the slowest person. Boy, like, Anthony. Thanks a lot, dude. I know. I was like, <laughs> thank God he wasn't my PE coach. I would have just been slaughtered in the fifth grade. <laughs> Anthony left behind for the velociraptors to eat his intestines. 100%. <laughs> So um, then Paris and Barbie are talking, and Barbie's like, um, hey, do you have anyone waiting at home for you? Because, like, you look so good right now. Like, you're looking so pretty. It's only surely you have someone waiting for you at home. Tell me your love story. Because mine is with Kyle, like, who you would never expect. Are you asking me? Because I'll say this. Oh, this is called a post-breakup glow, honey. I had a very rough breakup. He was cheating on me with his ex, and his ex stole my stuff and then posted photos online wearing my clothes. <laughs> this was oh, I said- one of the best stories I've ever heard on the load. <laughs> what? I had to rewind that. I was like, wait a minute. That was wild. And I said, why doesn't anyone believe me that the dress Margot Robbie is wearing to the Barbie premiere is actually mine? No one seems to understand. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm just happy being alone at the moment. You know, I can trust that my t-shirt's gonna stay my t-shirt. You know what I mean? I was like, this is the most traumatic thing that's ever happened. Someone wore my clothes on Instagram. <laughs> um, and she's like, you know, the guys on the bed are really nice, but <laughs> no. I'm like, you can just say it. They're not hot. <laughs> they're not hot, and they're not interesting. We get it. We've been watching. So you, you don't uh, have to invent trauma to <laughs> not want to fuck these guys, okay? Yeah, you don't have to do Mad Libs to come up with a story. It's <laughs> like, well, the reason why I'm not seeing anyone right now is because my ex's girlfriend had a fish tank, and it was full of bananas. It's like. <laughs> Okay, so the guest, so the chef is like, these guests they just want simple stuff. So tonight, how about we start with crispy chicken Caesar salad and then uh, red snapper and potato gratin. And Fraser was like, okay, and what are you doing for the girl who doesn't eat red snaps? Please don't say you're going to serve her an ice cream scoop. None of that, please. Uh, I do chicken. He's like, okay, and then chicken on the Caesar salad, there's chicken as well. He's like, Yes, chicken, crispy chicken, and then grilled chicken. <laughs> what else do we? What else do we have? <laughs> if you don't eat fish, there's nothing but chicken. 
<laughs> I might also don't forget that she hates vegetables to Penny. And serving her a like, Caesar salad again, which he's already done to the lady he doesn't like vegetables. <laughs> serving her vegetables I know. again. <laughs> And so Fraser's like, okay, chicken for starter, chicken for main, chicken for dessert. Got it. But also, like, Brandon's we've like, seen sounds this good to me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> wi Fi's working. <laughs> but also, like, you know, this is what happens. We see chefs do this, like, oh, okay, they're cretins. So only simple stuff for them. It's like, no, you don't have to condescend to them. It just means, like, just make something that tastes, like, make something that's, like, good, you know? Um, rather than trying to like, like look at what they say that they like on their sheet and make that for them. That's all you have to do. Yeah, go figure. I mean, look, he knows they're going to want lobster and crab cakes. Those yeah. are two things that have been requested. So why exactly. don't you just make lobster and crab cakes? Like, why do I have to tell you to do this? Like, come on, man. It's like some people like to come on to the yachts and. Like, some people come on and they are all about the culinary experience and the chef. Just make us something, you know, amazing. It feels very high-end. Some people like to come on the yachts and they just like to flex. And they say, lobster steak, lobster steak, lobster steak. Remember that lady who, who wanted gold leaf on her, her steak? She wanted gold leaf on everything. And it was just, she just wanted to flex. Uh, I mean, I think it's tacky as heck. But sometimes people just want to have that experience. And so, just give it to them. It's so easy. Yeah. So um, now they're this? setting up because the guests have requested that they treat them like celebrities and have a red carpet where they uh, all the crew takes their pictures. So they dress up like odd celebrities. It's like a weird costume party where yeah. they're just dressing up as whatever characters. I guess they have a dress to match. Yeah, it it didn't the the conception of this event was a little unclear to me, but yeah, they put out a red carpet, and then the crew is going to be the um, paparazzi, and then um, so a woman named Joy, she's like Sandra D from Greece, and then this guy Clifton is Jules from Pulp Fiction, and he was like actually really really good at it. He not only looked like Samuel L. Jackson, he sounded like Samuel L. Jackson. I feel like this was his idea. I feel like he has like a Samuel L. Jackson bit that he does, and he's like. Listen, this is what we got to do. Let's do like a red carpet event and we can all dress up as a celebrity, but I'm the only one who gets to be Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Weird choices. Like dress like celebrities and Jasmine's like, "I'm Jasmine from Aladdin." <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, all right. Not a celebrity, so, but that's fine. Uh, so Fraser's like, "This is such a tacky request. They clearly don't feel important in life, so they need to pay us to make them feel loved." Does that not speak volumes? Yeah, but does that not it's also speak for literally everybody on this show? <laughs> Like every guest who's but ever also come like on isn't here. that literally your job? You're being paid to like kowtow to like awful people week after week after week just to make them feel special for two days of their life. Yeah, but I think it's also Fraser's job for TV to want them all to die. So I'm I'm on his side on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so we get some sad, 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 sad Caesar salads. Sad Caesar. Not a great week for sad. Caesar salads on Bravo so far. I'm afraid. Terrible. Terrible. Um. And so Fraser is like, all right, chef, so one of them is not going to have lettuce, right? It's for the girl who doesn't eat salads and spells her name like an abomination, almost as much of an abomination as that dye job she calls hair. Yes, remember we spoke about that, Anthony? And he's like, uh. I was like, are they going to show the footage of him knocking over the bowl again? Because this is the time. Yeah. Um. So let me see. Where are we? I got a little lost. Sorry. Well, Paris is in the... Now Paris is cleaning a room. And she goes, oh my god. Someone shied something. And it's not in the shower. <laughs> so then we go back. And uh, they just keep on showing Ray. Ray is the king. He's the husband of the primary. And every time he eats, his face is just like down at his plate. It's like a little kid eating. And they just keep on showing this. I am pretty certain the producers are just trolling this guy. <laughs> and next, let's see what else the chef can do in ring molds. Oh, he does it big time. Big. This is a big, big selection of circles on this next plate. Yeah. So we get some potato gratin that's been done in a ring mold. And then some zucchini that's wrapped in spirals from a ring mold. And then there's some onion and tomato. A lot of ring mold. So then the <laughs> king circles. is like, uh, okay, now listen, because the chef comes up and he's like, and I would like to offer you circles. Circles. Only circles. <laughs> you are born loser. You die a circle. Loser. <laughs> and so Ray's like, hey, listen, I have heard that you do amazing lobster, grilled lobster mac and cheese. So 
I would love that later tonight if you could get that prepared and then just have it for them to cook later. And he's like, okay. Now that's reason. Now see, that's there's a request. I was like, you see, he put in the request very politely. Yeah. He's like, I just want a gr- uh, lobster grilled cheese. So then, uh, and, and Anthony's like, yeah, sure. So then there's like a raspberry milfouille for dessert. And of course, Tip Honey is like, oh my God, it looks like a little ice cream sandwich. I was like, it's literally just. And then she picks it up and eats sandwich. it with her fingers. Tip Haney, <laughs> for real. You are so, this group needs to be thrown. It's tacky, tacky uh... Tip Haney, tacky. <laughs> So now it's hot tub time, and Anthony is now making paninis for later because he wants to be prepared, but he's making turkey paninis. Turkey? Now now is when you bust out the turkey? Now, hours later after Eggs Benedict, you finally find the turkey? (laughs) So now the guests are wasted, and they want their lobster mac and cheese, and out come turkey paninis. And, And Ray is, like, pissed. He's like... He's like, hell no, that's not what I ordered. He didn't. He didn't do the lobster, the grilled cheese. We talked about it. We talked. We had a whole conversation about it. Melted bullshit cheddar. That's fucked up. I asked for lobster. He's like, he's really upset. And you know what? I was fully on his side. He went. He asked for the lobster mac and cheese. I mean, the lobster grilled cheese it was on camera. It was clear. It wasn't even asked for in an obnoxious way. And and Anthony still fucked it up. So they go wake up Anthony because at this point, like, yeah, you've got to wake up Anthony, right? Because he's really fucked up. So then Anthony is like, no, uh, they never said lobster. I'm not, I I hear what I hear. No one said lobster. And of course, they show the clip of him being like, I would love the lobster. Ding, ding, ding. (laughs) Grilled cheese. I mean, are we really going to believe the. Are we really going to believe the guy who almost knocked over a bowl this morning? I don't think so. Yeah. Well, let's show that spinning bowl again. Could have fallen. <laughs> Could have fallen. Could have been a tragedy. Mm-hmm. So he makes them. And then, you know, Ray's like, yeah, I didn't really want to wake you up. But, you know, and then Brandon's like, thank you. Thank you. Now go back to bed because I'm going to message you later. Okay. Right here. <laughs> so then um dylan is getting the port side ready so now dylan is being so nice to sunny he's like all right just getting that port side ready for when we go in i know it's a lot of pressure but you've got this you've got this girl and she's like um thanks i mean i know that you probably wanted to be the lead he's like i don't care you've got this you've got this you've got this vagina haver <laughs> And uh, Dylan is like, you know, I don't think Sunny's a bad person at all, even though she has a vagina. I mean, there's no point in me going and firing it up more, you know? Like, what are we going to do? I need to accept it. Just like how I have accepted that there's ham that has calories in its film, and you just have to wash it off, and that's all. (laughs) He's like, yeah, when there's a will, there's a way. When there's bad egos in play, oh, I'm a poet. I didn't even know. Yes, poetry, poetry. Um, so then the boat is approaching the shore. Guys, we could all be dying. But they did it. Everything worked out great, guys. And now they the did. guests are about to leave. So um, let's hear what Carmen has to say. She's like, it's a She's non-pork like eater. <laughs> bad, bad. This is coming from a non-pork eater. Very bad. Bad yeah, news, guys. Non-pork eater. She's like, I would think that you would have more options like some options, like literally an Oscar Mayer truck just drove by with, and there's a billboard over there for turkey bacon. Like there's literally options everywhere. And you know, I think I said oysters and duck bacon and like, I'm the primary, I'm the head bitch. And I didn't get any of that. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, you, you die head bitch. You, you live head bitch. So they leave and now it's clean, clean time. And uh, Anthony's very, very sad. And it's tip meeting time. So uh, the captain announces newly dickhand, Sonny. All right, now let's move on to this. The guests were demanding, uh, but they weren't very joyful in the end. And that reflected in the tip, $17,200. Lowest tip of the season. Lower than Jill Zarin's tip. So everyone's sad. And Fraser's like, that is embarrassing. That is a Vada. That is adventure spelled backwards because it was the opposite of an adventure. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. It's embarrassing. It's almost as embarrassing as a bowl that could have fallen on the floor. Is it because of the food? I'm going to say yes. So Carrie calls Fraser up to the wheelhouse. And he's like, well, the guests weren't enjoying the food and there were some issues on the, over there. Yes, where the preferences weren't really considered and 
the meals lost any sense of superior standard to it. It's almost as if they were cooked in a bowl that was teetering on the edge of a counter about to fall into the dark abyss below. That sort of anxiety you can taste. So then Captain Carey does his leadership thing, which now that we're seeing it in action again, I see that this is just what he does, where he fires somebody by telling them how amazing they are. So he's like, "Yeah, all right, chef, come up here. Now, not only were you amazing in the first revival of Cabaret, and amazing enough to get yourself on a hosting gig on uh, Peacock's own The Traders." You're handsome, you're gorgeous, you were chubby once, you're not anymore. You are too good for this job, sir. You are fired with honors. Congratulations. <laughs> You've won this great honor of being let go. Congrat give me a hug. Give me a who would you like Here's to thank? Thing. And Anthony's like, Well, I don't really know what you're talking about. He's like, Yeah, well, you don't see where things were starting to go wrong with the service. I mean, to start, the crew food was not a priority. Yeah, it's I'm going back to charge number one, but this is it's that deep. The food's been late. You've been making mistakes. You've not been prepared. I'm not seeing guests satisfied with elements of what you're doing. Jill Zarin had to teach you how to make good Diet Coke. I mean, that's embarrassing. You don't even know how to make good Diet Coke. Everyone knows. Ah, you got to use the ice. But then why are all these people telling me you are the most amazing chef in the world? What language was that? Because I'm speaking three of them and I never heard that. <laughs> He's like, but uh, people say I'm so good. This is the first time. First time I'm fired in my life. First time I'm fired. Well, don't you worry. I'm sure you'll be fired many more times after this. <laughs> All it takes is a little practice. <laughs> I'm sure after people meet you with this reputation, they'll start coming fast and furious. All right. Now, listen, you let go. But to Brickler. All right. That means congratulations into a, in a language that you'll probably never need to learn because you're never going to Turkey when you can't even find it in the fridge. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, come on, let's have a hug, okay? I have a lot of respect for you, mate, the sort of respect that says I never want to see you on this bird again. All right, let's hug. Nice deep hug. All right, let me put my, my cheek right on your shoulder. Let's hold for about five <laughs> seconds, feel the respect going from my cheek into your shoulder, and I'm going to try to – Get some culinary inspiration from you. Not getting any. My choice was the smart one. All right. Now go see yourself off there. Good <laughs> luck to you. And now things like, I'm in such real shock. Like, real shock. Like, it is not possible. Get out of here. He's so cute, Anthony. This is, I'm actually glad he left because I really liked Anthony and really stood up for him as much as I could until the past couple of weeks. But I'm out. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm completely out of compassion. And so it's time for you to go. So congratulations. Anthony is, he's just in that that genre of below deck chefs, maybe best exemplified by Kiko. Kiko, I was Who are just say, yeah. sweet and lovely, but at a certain point, they're out of their depth. Because like, never forget Kiko's Vegas dinner, right? Like that yeah. was, at a certain point, you just have to now say, okay, it's time for you to go back to land. Yeah, goodbye. So then um, Carrie, you know, does a big long hug. Is that a boner? <laughs> no, it is a... Uh, <laughs> Actually, a corkscrew. I can't even do Bona right. Ah. <laughs> Live without Bona, die without Bona. Goodbye. I'll be back. I'll be back as the man ruling this boat, hopefully with Bona. I just want to say that if you'd been hugging my echidna, you would have had five boners you were feeling. Just saying. Google it. Um, Google it. <laughs> <laughs> when Carrie hugged Anthony, I cracked up because Carrie like, put his whole head down on his shoulder. like It was like a really deep... Like, yeah, really, uh, I'm showing you how much respect I have because I'm going fully horizontal with my head. Yeah. He was just like down there. <laughs> um, so, but also bored at the same time. You know, he was like, oh, God, I got to call up Norman now and get a new chef. Yeah. So, um, Fraser enters. He's like, what did the captain say? Did he suggest that you pre cook a steak? <laughs> <laughs> did he find your ice cream scoop for you? Since Lord knows you still haven't found it. And so Anthony's like, oh, I'm not good enough to be on this boat. It's too much for me. I'm still just trying. I'm working hard every day and I never complain. But here I am, innocent Anthony. Like, he said something about fitting a square peg into a circle. And I thought, but everyone only wants circles in circles. I don't understand. Now listen, this has nothing to do with you. You are the kindest and nicest chef I've ever worked with. This has to do with kind, nice people not belonging in yachting. Do you understand? <laughs> Go where it, wherever it is that nice, kind people go to. Church, might I suggest? Um, space. Sure. No one, no one who put the flag on the moon was accused of being a bitch. Do you know what I'm saying? Probably not. Listen, 
this has nothing to do with you. It just, it just reflects on how difficult it is to not knock over a bull. Do you understand how terrifying that <laughs> Can we roll that me? clip again? Look at your psychosis <laughs> spinning out of control in the form of this wheel almost falling on the floor. All right? Might I, I mean, suggest checking yourself bull. into a hospital? You're disgustingly sick. We all know any competent chef would never casually hit the side of their bowl in such a way that it might topple off the side of the counter and if only for your other hand braced into safety. Uh, and it's just it's unacceptable. So then it starts spreading around the boat that... <laughs> By spreading, it's barbier. Chef got fired. Mm -hmm. Chef got fired, you hear? Chef got fired. Chef got fired. Chef got fired. Chef got... Hey, Jill Zarin was calling to say, yeah, I'm still making good Diet Coke and Chef got fired. Yeah, bye. <laughs> So a new chef is called to come on in and um, people check on Anthony. It's actually really sweet because Anthony's like, oh, I miss everybody. I will come back ruling roost. And they all go out on the deck and group hug him. It was so cute. I had a, I had a couple was, little salties fly out. It was disgusting. Oh, I, I know. I was emotional watching them all hug him goodbye and not invite him out to dinner with them all. <laughs> That Such was so assholes. sweet. That was so sweet of them to be like, well, it's our day off, but you still can't eat with us. Well, we nobody us. wants a fired person there, you know? Because then it's Especially just going to all go downhill. Like, oh, crying French, crying French, crying French. Like, get the fuck out of here. You're fired, okay? Go party with other the glasses fired he's going to knock over. Yeah, no. Yeah. They don't want that. So he leaves, and... Um, so now everyone goes out, and um, Barbie's telling Kyle that he can't go in her bed tonight. So they get to the restaurant. There's a cat there, so I'm happy. And then Dylan is like, well, you know, by the way, so if you, okay, Sonny, if you could list like three things that you could see yourself enjoying for the rest of your life, what would they be? And when they involve ham, that does not have the fat washed off of it. And she says, well, I would live on an island. I would have my own boat, and I'd grow my own food. Back to basics. I was like, God, you're that's a boring. It's nice. Literally it's a nice lamest. fantasy. I want to live on an island with a boat and grow my own food. Fuck off, man. I can't get behind you. You could literally like do this. that already. Yeah. That's just, your fantasy. You who's stopping you? Who's stopping you from littering the world on this giant super yacht? Get the fuck out of here. Go go eat a potato. So, so Dylan's like, oh, my mom and dad have a farm in the south of Africa by the beach. And then Ben's getting jealous. Which So then I was like happy that this conversation was happening because Ben was getting jealous. Yeah, this is pretty funny that Dylan's like, oh, okay. So Ben wants to talk to me about being an asshole. I'm going to try and steal his girlfriend. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, Dylan's like, yes, by the way, Sunny, you have to come to South Africa. You have to come visit us. And she's like, oh, for sure, for sure. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. So then they kiss on both cheeks, um, which was giving me kind of like gay best friend vibes, to be honest. So I think that she was probably he thinking the same thing. He does give those like, vibes. And he did say in the beginning, he's like, oh, men flirt with me and women flirt with me. Um, he does give off he does give off gay best friend vibes, and I'm not just saying that because he was caught hanging out with Katie Maloney, <laughs> but he does give those vibes. <laughs> so you know, Sonny's probably like, "This is great. I've got a new gay. I love it. Everything's great. Uh, I got invited to South Africa. I'm sure there's an island there. I'm sure I could grow some food. Like life is good." Yeah. Okay, so then uh, Kyle and Barbie are talking, and um, he's like, I'm respecting where you're at. And she's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you are. So, well, like, what if I was hooking up with someone else? Would you respect that? Because, like, you probably won't. But, like, I totally could right now because, like, we're single. So, like, I can do whatever the fuck I want to, Kyle. <laughs> he's like, oh, no, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care. I'm not saying, well, then again, I'm not, not that I wouldn't care, but I'm not saying that I wouldn't care. You know what I'm saying? Do you care about what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know if I care what I'm saying. I'm going to Wyoming. Well, like, like there's, like, chemistry between Kyle and I, but, like, normally, I date guys who are, like, Jewish, because that's how I identify, so... <laughs> I forgot I'm that her, that was her like thing. Like, I'm not Jewish, yeah. but I identify as Jewish. <laughs> I've dated guys who are like Jewish and hardworking and like stable. And like Kyle, on the other hand, is like he's not modest and he's very free spirited. And what I'm trying to say is he's not stable. He's not Jewish. He's not hardworking. He's basically human garbage. And I think I'm into that now. <laughs> I, mean, I was like, wow, this is a very flattering <laughs> monologue, Barbie. Kyle's going to love seeing this later. <laughs> Yeah, please play this at your wedding. <laughs> she goes, 
I have this guard that cares so much about what people think or what my image is. And I don't think my dad would support me being with Kyle, but really he is my safety. It's just a weird situation to be in. I've realized I don't care if people are embarrassed for me that I'm dating Kyle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I also the way that she describes it. She's like, I don't really care what my dad thinks, but like, it's really like, he's my safety on this boat. I was like, you're not Whitney Houston. You know what I mean? She's like, yeah. I was like, he's like the only person taking care of. He's my bodyguard on this boat, basically. <laughs> like, you're a maid on a boat. Can we just like calm down the rhetoric here? I know. I know. So now um, there's like a pool in this bar. So Dylan and Ben are swimming and then. Fraser's like, all right, everyone, why don't we play truth or dare? And then immediately they're like, okay, dare Fraser, drink a shot out of this (laughs) flip-flop. He's like, I'm regretting this. Because of course they do that to the gay guy, because to each other they do sexual shit. But with the gay guy, they're like, here, do some drink drink piss out of a shoe. And then with everyone else, like, fuck me. Here's your dare. Fuck me in my ear. You know, it's like, hey, wait, how the the gay guy had to do the shoe drink? (laughs) And then um, Barbie, she's like, I want a dare. So Dylan's like, okay, here's a dare. This is the wildest dare you've ever had. Eat a slice of ham without rinsing it. (laughs) Oh, I dare someone to do that. That's wild and wacky. I just wanted to see Dylan cry. (laughs) So uh, Dylan says, I dare you to choose a guy to kiss. And so Barbie's like, um, and then there's like a, it's, it's like a commercial break because it's like, is she going to make out with someone else to test Kyle whether or not Kyle would be upset if she hooked up with someone else? But guess what? She doesn't. She doesn't kiss anyone. She just takes a shot. Yeah, and then Kyle has the best stare because, of course, he does, and he makes Ben and Zandy swap outfits, <laughs> <laughs> and Ben really takes to it. I have to say, he loves Ben. It. He's just like flipping ben his hair around, like- and like he's like totally into it. He's like looks like a real housewife of New Jersey, basically, when he puts on Zandy's outfit. Like he looks like a few steps away from Jen Pessler. Is he Rosanna or Rosanna? Which which one is he? Rosanna <laughs> He's one or Rosanna? Of the Rosanna's. <laughs> so um Bar so now they go back to the boat and Barbie's like, change my mind, you can't come to the bed with me. So she pulls Kyle and she's like, My mom's a sex therapist, but my dad is like really conservative and into Coca-Cola. So like it's a mix of both worlds. Cause like <laughs> like what do I do? Like, do I fuck or do I like I don't know, like make out with a Coke bottle? It's like really hard. <laughs> So downstairs in the crew mess, Dylan and Sonny are sitting next together. They're sitting together, next to each other, together. <laughs> and Dylan is like, Sue, what's going on with you and Ben? And she's like, I don't know. I mean, I think we're just like having fun once in a while. I, we're not officially an item because we're working on being an item. And we're not actually together. We're working on being together. So I don't know what we are. And he's so like, you're free? So- Let's get married. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. She's like, ew. <laughs> it's like on my cheek. No, on my head, on my elbow. He goes in for a full kiss out of nowhere. It's so, <laughs> it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, sir? Yeah, it's uh, such a bad soap opera play. I just love it. Like, I'm going to go It's also like that man girl. thing of like, but it's also like a man thing of like, oh, you're a, you're a single girl, so therefore I will kiss you, and you shall kiss me back. <laughs> it's like, what? No, you have to earn that. Yeah, I don't know where any of this came from, but it was so awkward, and she literally laughs in his face. She's like, huh, no, 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 oh, no, no, no. And she's like, he may look like an athlete, but he's got no game whatsoever, okay? He doesn't know how to flirt. I mean, (laughs) grow a kumquat. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, this is just not it. She goes, it's kind of an ick. I'm like, I feel like he started on ick. Like, I feel like what is below ick? Because that's where he's at now. So You know what this this episode was called? Kind of an ick. Kind of an ick. Isn't that a weird... They're like, wow, Ick, that was I the center of the whole episode. Sonny's comment. Ick. Saying the whole yeah, episode on that. So Barbie is like, oh my God, Kyle like, got this new side of me. It's like never shown. Because like normally people just see like this version. It's like, it's Barbie and she's like a girl, you know? Like she probably has nannies. But like I'm also like a girl who like guys, likes guys sometimes, especially like super trashy ones that other people aren't going to like. Like I don't think anybody's like really seen that side. I was like, is this a behind? She's, is this like a biography of... 
the weirdest. Barbie talks about herself in such an odd way. Like she's just, I know. she's being interviewed for being like the humanitarian of the, I don't know how to explain that. I know, she's always talking about her. herself. She's always talking about herself like she's like a cultural force. And so she's, she, and, and again, she's like totally dissing Kyle. She goes, I've always been with people for certain prerequisites, like maybe looks, maybe success, you know, maybe because my father would approve, maybe because they seem educated, maybe because they're funny, maybe because they're fun to talk with. But with Kyle, I don't have to worry about those things. <laughs> you know, I've been with, like, with people like just simply for the fact that they're like not raging alcoholics or don't have scars on their ass that were self-inflicted after like putting burnt hangers on them. But Kyle's really blown up all those expectations. I mean, he's basically <laughs> like a will work for a beer kind of a guy, and I'm going to fuck him on camera right now. Bye. <laughs> She goes, with Kyle, I've transformed every single thing I've ever stood for or looked for. I'm like, okay, lady. <laughs> you I even voted green. I, I literally just voted green. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> this is, she's, tr- what is this like epic retelling of her love life here? He's transformed every single thing I've ever stood for. What? Lady, lady. get over yourself. You're a, you're, you're, <laughs> you're interior Lady, about you to fuck a decky. It's like it happens 10 times a season on every show. You did not just have ayahuasca, okay, lady? You did not just go volunteer at the Peace Corps, you know, <laughs> so funny. in the Gambia. Okay, you're like, come on. Like, you're, you're, you're about to fuck a, a, a Scottish guy. So they That's do. It. They go bang in the bathroom. <laughs> and then Benny and Sonny hear, the thump, uh, hear it. And Sonny's like, oh, my God, did you hear that? Dun, dun, dun. And next week, we see that Barbie immediately freaks out. She's like, oh my god, I embarrassed my dad. I embarrassed my dad. No, not by fucking. Barbie. By fucking you on camera. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. It's like fucking Barbie also the entire see- below deck of the Titanic movie right in front of my dad. <laughs> How is he ever supposed to golf with the Coca-Cola president ever again? It's like literally going into the Smithsonian and fucking a picture of someone going through hard times in the depression. It's so embarrassing. Because <laughs> you can sort of see Kyle. If you put, put Kyle in a little cap, little yeah. cap it's like, nine, it's, he's like Rapes of Wrath. Um, it's like fucking the opening number to Les Mis. It's just like <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fucking the character that Ben Mandel- Mandelker played in the eighth grade production of A Tree Grows in Brooklyn where his only line was to say Brigadoon. apples, pencils, Welcome only a nickel, Brigadoon. mister. Mixed with Ben Mandelker's 10th grade role of Harry Beaton in Brigadoon. <laughs> Brigadoon. <laughs> um, uh, but by the way, just to say, she feels shame next week because Ben goes up to her and is like, well, we heard you fucking. So, uh, We'll see how that all plays out. So just just I just got this text. This is so living in Texas. Today, the 22nd of April, is the last day to order your concealed carry license. Get it in 15 minutes. Link. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for being here uh, for this below dick recap. We'll be back later this week with so much Vanderpump. Oh my God. Vanderpump rules. Uh Vanderpump Villa will be on our bonus feed. Uh, then we've got the valley. There's a lot going on, guys. Summer house. It's, a, it's so much. Thanks everyone for being here, and we will catch you on the next episode. Bye. Bye. Like you. Watch what crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurth. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. 
Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. We forever love Ava. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish. It's Jen Plish. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo. Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a can. And Anthony, let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crafts ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today, or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey. Fifty high school senior girls descend on Mobile, Alabama every summer to compete for a massive cash prize. It isn't Survivor. It's one of America's most lucrative scholarship competitions for teen girls. It's been around for seven decades. Now you'll hear what took place behind the scenes. From Pineapple Street Studios and Wondery, this is The Competition. I'm your host, Shimo Liai, and I was Nevada's contestant 20 years ago. Now I'm returning as a judge to find out what two weeks with 50 of the country's most ambitious teens can tell us about girlhood in America. What happens when the competitors are thrown into the deep end with the best and brightest? And how does surviving the competition prepare them for everything that comes after? Follow the competition on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes of the competition early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery+. Plus. I love a good parasocial relationship with a celebrity who will probably never know my name. I mean, honestly, who knows? Don't count yourself out. (laughs) But my favorite part about these feuds is how they're ignited by the tiniest things. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. I accidentally laminated my brows too much. It starts small and then it gets so big. Be honest, Naomi, I'm fearful of you to this day. I don't know her. We all just have to admit, we're addicted. Everybody has opinions. Everyone picks sides. Leave Britney Spears alone right now. From Wondery, I'm Sydney Battle. And I'm Matt Bellisai. And this is Dis and Tell. La, la, la. Where we unpack why we get so invested in these feuds and whether or not our attention only makes the whole thing worse. Follow Dis and Tell wherever you get your podcasts.